Let me guess, you just started your first clothing brand, but you have no idea on how to create a website, how to get sales and so on. Well, you've came to the right place, because in today's Shopify tutorial, I will walk you through step by step on how to create a beautiful clothing store for your brand. We are going to cover everything from adding your first product to customizing your pages and at the end I will also give you guys some special sauce on how to increase the conversion rate, average order value and a lot more. So let's get started by getting yourselves a Shopify account. By using my affiliate link down below you can right now get a free trial for 3 months which is quite a no brainer. So just put in your email and quickly go through the questions. Once we are on the Shopify dashboard, we will have to first of all activate our free trial. We can do so by simply just clicking on select a plan right here and we are then going to have the option to choose any of these free plans right here for our free trial period. Now I would actually recommend you to simply just go for the basic plan. This is most of the time going to be the best option when starting out. So just click on select basic right here and then put in your payment method. And once you've did so, you can then start your free trial period. To now get started, we will have to first of all set a theme for our store. To do so, head over to the online store settings on the left and under themes you can then see all sorts of different options which you have available. You can actually also visit the theme store to even get more options. Now generally speaking, I would recommend you to just go for one of the free themes when starting out and the free theme which I would recommend you to use is going to be the Dawn theme. This is a super popular theme and a lot of big clothing stores stores like the Nude Project for example actually also started out with this exact theme. Now this is actually also the theme which has been installed by default so we won't actually have to install any other theme. However if you would want to use another theme you would just have to click on try theme right here and this is then automatically going to install that exact theme onto Shopify. Either way, let's now continue with adding the first product onto our store. Because right now, let's actually open this up, if we are going to open the customization options, we can't really see anything right here and therefore it doesn't really make sense to get started customizing this, rather let's add a product. So to do so, head over to Shopify and under products on the left, we can then actually add our product. Here you can then set the title, description as well as media for your product. And by the way, I'm going to use some example products from the Peso clothing website. So if you actually do like any of these products, make sure to check them out. Either way, um, right here on the media, you can then actually also realign the order of your pictures. So in this case, I'm just going to make this picture right here as the first one. And we can then basically play around with this uh, depending on our own likings. Under pricing, we can then first of all set the actual price. This is going to be the price that customers are going to have to pay. However, we can then also set the compared price. What does this mean? Well, if we are going to set the price as $49.90 and the compared price at $89.90, then this is basically going to say that this product is discounted from 90 bucks to 50 bucks essentially. So this would just be the way of adding a sale onto your product. We can then also select if you do want to charge tax on this product and basically for organization purposes, we can also insert the cost per item. This isn't going to be displayed for your customers. Obviously, this is just for you so that you have uh, basically a profit calculator. I'm just going to say that this is going to cost 20 euros and as for the inventory, um, we can either unselect track quantity. I would basically only recommend you to use this when you are launching a pre-order for a certain product, a certain hoodie. Then this does make sense as you want as many orders as possible. Otherwise, make sure to actually leave this turned on and then put in your quantity right here. I'm going to say that this is going to be 50 and under shipping, we will then have to insert the actual weight of our product. This is super useful because this is then later on going to be used to basically calculate the shipping right inside Shopify. Now obviously as I'm going to be in the EU, I'm from Austria, this is going to say kilograms but this is going to be different if you are for example going to live in the US. So I'm just going to say that this t-shirt is going to uh, basically is going to weigh 0.5 kilograms. We can then also add variants. Now as this is a clothing related product we are obviously going to add a variant for the size. So let's add that right here. We do have a default option for this and by then clicking on this and by actually clicking on add size right here we can add all of the different sizing options which we want to have for our product. I'm just going to add SMLXL and I'm going to delete the one size option. Now if you for example are going to have a t-shirt in multiple different colors then you could also 
also add another variant right here. And as you can see, we aren't going to have a default color variant. So what you would now need to do is to click on create custom option. We can then name this color and we could then say beige or black. Now, one thing which is also important to notice, let me actually delete this, um, right here on the variant, you can see all of your different variants. However, you can then also see this image thing right here on the left. This is basically being used to display the correct image for a variant. So let's go with the same example. If you are going to have a t-shirt in multiple different colors, then you would obviously want to show the exact color which someone is going to select under your product variant. So this would be the place where you would then actually have to select the image to be shown. Right, under category meta fields, make sure to just either you can customize this or you can actually just leave this as the default. It doesn't really matter too much. Make sure to just head over to product organization right here and under vendor, add your brand name. So in this case, I'm just going to add Peso Clothing as an example and make sure to actually add this. Otherwise it is going to say my store, which is going to look somewhat unprofessional. Either way, we are now going to save this and I will now quickly repeat this process with some other products so that we can actually use them for this video. I've now added some other products and when we are now going to open up our store customization options, we can see them right here. However, as you can see, um, this right now does look a little bit messy. So to basically combat this, we would have to set up collections. Now collections are super common on clothing stores. You for example have men women's collection or tops bottoms, new arrivals and so on. And to actually add collections on Shopify, simply head over to collections on the left, click on create collection and then put in a title. So I'm just going to say tops and I can then just select all of the tops right here. So let's actually select them. Tuck, tuck. And now we have added them and I will of course actually repeat this with the bottoms as well. And now that we've added the bottoms, I will also create a new arrivals collection. This is actually always nice to have as this is going to kind of help with the conversion rate. So I'm just going to add some random products onto here um, so that we can actually use this. Perfect. Let's now save this and now we can actually get to the customization part of our website. Arguably the most important part of everything. If you aren't going to create a good looking website, it is going to be very hard to succeed with your clothing store. So make sure to listen carefully. Either way, to get started, head over to online store. And if you haven't already, make sure to click on customize right here and open this in a new tab. But I actually already have this open right here. So I'm just going to continue with this tab. Now Shopify is what we call a section based editor. On the left, we can see an overview of the page which we are currently on. We do have the header, template and footer. When actually selecting some of these elements and sections, we can see all of the settings on the right. Now this right here, the image banner section, this is going to give us the general styling option for the image banner. If we would want to change the actual elements inside this image banner, on Shopify also called blocks, we would have to select that right here and then we can change the heading, we can change the buttons and so on. On the top, we can then actually also change the page which we are going to edit and on the top right, we can also change the view. This is super important. Make sure that your website always is well optimized on mobile. Most of your actual customers are going to come from the, from the mobile device, especially for clothing related stores. So make sure that this is well optimized. Most of the time Shopify does a pretty good job by default doing this but make sure to double check either way let's now actually get started through this from top to bottom on the top we do have what we call an announcement bar now this is actually a great way of displaying all sorts of different incentivizers special offers and so on on why people should buy something of you right now so to actually change this once again head over to the section and then navigate to the block and right here we can then change the text i'm just going to say minus 20 percent of all products until Saturday, for example. And we can then actually also make this text clickable by adding a link onto this. So we can do this by simply just selecting products and I will then select all products. And like this, whenever someone is going to click on this, they are going to be redirected onto the all products set. As for the header, we will have to first of all upload our logo onto this. We can do so by heading over to the theme settings. Now, these theme settings basically are going to be the default parameters for your store. Meaning that inside here you can set all of the default stuff like logo, the colors that you're going to use, the font that you're going to use and so on. And this is basically just going to work as a default library. So to actually add a logo, simply click on logo right here and then upload your logo. Now our logo has been added. Now I think this is a little bit too big. So I'm actually going to make this smaller. 
something like 50 or let's go with 60 pixels I guess. Yeah, something like this does look way better. And let's now actually get to the actual header customization part. First of all, we do have the menu right here. To actually change these menu items, head over to the second tab, which you have open, the settings tab, and then navigate to the navigation settings on the left right here. And under main menu, you can then find the different kind of menu items. I'm going to delete these two as I don't really think they are that important. Rather, I'm going to add a new menu item and I'm going to select the tops collection right here as well as the bottoms and then this is actually a quick little tip i will also add another menu item i will just select uh, collections as well and i'm then going to click on all collections i'm going to rename this to collections and actually when now adding this and when dragging bottoms under this and to the right repeat this with tops, you now are going to have a sub menu, which I think does look way better. I'm however also going to add another final menu item onto this. This is going to be the new arrivals collection right here. So now that we have this added, we can actually save this and we can head back to our header settings right here. Now, usually this does take a couple of seconds to actually update. On the right, we then do have all sorts of other settings which we can use to customize our header. Um, I'm usually a big fan of actually making this um, as simple as possible. So I'm just going to use this middle left option. However, the middle center option actually also does look pretty good. So let's actually stick with this one. And then the next, and I guess the most important section of your site is going to be this one right here, which we call the hero section. Meaning that this is the section which basically every visitor is going to see first when going on your site, therefore it is also super important to customize. So I'm going to simply just upload an image banner onto this. All right, now this has been added. Now as for the font for the heading and for the button right here, I don't really like this at all actually. I rather want to go for a more minimalistic, more clean aesthetic. So I'm going to head over to the theme settings and under typography, we can then actually change the headings font. So I'm going to click on change and I'm going to use the inter font for this. And I think this right away does look way nicer. Now, as for the actual hero, you can add an image banner like they have added by default, but there are basically countless different ways of adding a hero section. You let, let's for example, look at this. We can also add an image with banner section right here. And I actually really like this. So let me quick, actually quickly go over this. We could then, for example, add an image onto this, duck, duck. Now that we have added this, we can then change the image uh, desktop image width to small. I think this does look better. Let's change the desktop content positioning to middle. Um, and I'm actually going to delete this middle text right here, just to give you guys an idea. Now, as for this part, I don't really like the image. I think it is way too flat. We would want to add a rounded corner style. By the way, I'm quickly going through this as I just want to show it to you. And um, I would want to go for a more rounded corner style right here. So I would have to head over to theme settings under me Media, we can then change the corner radius to 8. I'm going to repeat this with the buttons as well. And now this would be another way of having a pretty good hero section, but I'm going to delete this right now. Rather, let's stick to this default hero section, which we have through an image banner. And let's now actually go through the text. I'm just going to rename this to made to last, for example random example obviously and as for the actual button make sure to click on this and make sure that this is actually linked to the all products tab we can actually also unselect this if we do want to have this kind of different button style but i actually like the outline button style really much so i'm just going to stick to that as for the featured product section i actually really like this section but i think by default this does look not really nice so rather let's actually change the collection right here and let's change this to the new arrivals collection I'm going to simply just click on here and I'm then actually also going to change the heading to new arrivals. And then as we are a clothing related store, I will actually also add another section and I'm then going to add a collection list right here. I'm going to actually delete the heading. I'm going to delete one of the collections. I'm going to change the number of columns to two. And now and I'm now going to change this collection to tops and this one to bottoms. And now when changing this right here to adapt to image, and now our customers are going to have the option to choose in between these two collections, which I think does make really much sense for clothing related store. Now when now changing the actual breakpoint to mobile, we can actually view this and I think this does look really good. 
So let's actually use this as our homepage. I'm usually a big fan of keeping the homepage simple and there are a lot of different approaches to this, but I think when keeping it simple, you can really funnel more traffic onto your product page where you can then actually convert your customers. So let's actually just use this homepage and let's now head over to our product page. We can do so by clicking on products right here and by clicking on default product. And this is how it is by default going to look like. Now let's actually delete this share function. No one is going to use this either way and I don't really think it makes sense on a product page. Um, but I'm actually a big fan of this. I'm not going to change this too much as this would actually be way too long for this video. However, I would highly recommend you to add social proof onto your store. This is going to be one of the key factors when it comes to conversion rate and this can really make or break everything because a lot of people, myself included, are going to look at reviews, are going to look at pictures of other people wearing the stuff that I want to buy. So you will have to add something like that. For example, one way of doing this would be through embedding different kind of Instagram posts where people are going to wear your stuff or what I'm actually a big fan of is by using widgets like Luke's. I will leave you a tutorial for that down below along with a link. It's super simple. I just don't want to make this video too long so I'm not going to include it but by using Luke's you can add video reviews, image reviews, you can add different kind of image sliders and you can actually also encourage your customers to actually write reviews by giving them discounts and so on. Make sure to check it out. Either way right here on the product page as for the you may also like a second I think this does actually make sense to add. However, let's actually click on this and let's change the product card to adapt to image and like this the image isn't going to be cut off. Perfect. Let's now actually save this. Before we can actually launch our store, we will actually have to go into the backend settings so that people can actually check out and so that the shipping works and so on. To do so, head over to the settings on the bottom left. First of all, head over to payments and then make sure to set up Shopify payments. It's super simple. This is going to give you guys a lot of different payment options for your customers by just activating this right here. So make sure to just go through this. And once you've did so, head over to the markets on the left because by default, your store is only going to be available in your domestic market. For me, this would be Austria, but in my case, I do want to sell my products internationally. So to actually do that, I would have to select international right here, and then I would simply just have to mark this as active. Once we've did so, we can save this, and now we can sell our products all across the world. To now set up the shipping, head over to shipping and delivery and by default you are going to have two different rates. First of all, a domestic shipping rate right here. So let me open this up and you're going to have the domestic shipping rate, which by standard is going to be free. You can actually also edit this and you're going to have your standard international rate, which by default is going to cost 19 euros. You can actually also add conditional pricing so that you can basically change your pricing based on the item weight or on the overall order price and so on. So actually, once you've set up the shipping, you will then have to head over to policies. This would be the place where you are going to have to set up all of the legal stuff. Shopify makes it really easy, however. Just click on these policies, click on insert template, and then, this is really important, make sure to read through this and make sure to update all of the fields where you will actually have to update them. And then repeat this with all of the policies right here. To now make these policies visible, head over to the theme, uh, to the online store settings right here on the left, head over to navigation, then click on folder menu, and now make sure to delete these two uh, items, make sure to add new menu items, and under policies, you can then add your policies. Once back on the store settings, we will just have to head over to a footer, and we will then have to add a block, click on menu, and then we can actually add the legal links right here. The final step now is going to be to actually head over to domains and to actually either set up or buy yourself a professional domain. After you've did so, you can head over to your online store settings, you can remove the password and you can launch your clothing store. Now, if you do want to add other stuff like reviews or like a size chart for your products, I will leave you some useful tips and videos on screen right now. Either way, I really hope that this video was helpful. If it was, please make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.